and then uh, run an EPL or an MPL, uh, a private connection internet back to wherever your office is, and it'll look like it's in-house, but yet it's sitting in a data center so somewhere. So it's basically secure. like your own cloud that you leased in space. Like you it's could look at it that way, sure. Welcome to Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news, trends, and hottest topics that focus on advances in cybersecurity and cyber industry economics. Our expert yet down-to-earth hosts make cybersecurity straightforward. They ask the tough questions and make this challenging topic something that everyone can understand. Our candid approach lets guests open up on topics we would all like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at NewCyberFrontier.com. That's www.NewCyberFrontier.com. Now join today's host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. On today, we're talking to a Chief Outreach Officer, uh, Kathleen Smith, for CyberSecJobs.com. And uh, this is, uh, I think, an interesting one, timely. The markets are changing a little bit here as we're all kind of at home and stuck doing things differently a little bit. Um, but Kathleen, welcome today. Thanks for joining. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. Definitely. So start out, give us your background. What's it take to be in your type of role? How did you get there? And what is a chief outreach officer? Great question, especially since this is a new title that I just gave myself within the last few months. I've been with clearjobs.net for 19 years, and we opened up a second branch of the company, CyberSec Jobs, five years ago. And I had always been considered the head of marketing, even though a lot of what I did was just being out in the community. I'm a military spouse. I work for a veteran-owned firm. I was always out at military bases teaching job search or how to use social networking in a security cleared environment. And once I started moving into the cybersecurity community, a lot of my efforts were helping out various different conferences. I am the director for Higher Ground at Besides Las Vegas. I'm on the staff there. I'm on the staff of several other B-sides. So I am definitely out in the community. So rather than saying I'm marketing, really what I'm doing is doing a lot of outreach. My overall career really has been in outreach or niche marketing. Prior to being with ClearJobs.net, I was the head of marketing for World Wildlife Fund. And before that, several name brands such as American Red Cross, Baxter Travenal, and Metropolitan Life. Interesting. So when you said niche marketing, my ears picked up. And I'm interested in any like advice on you know, cybersecurity is a very niche market. What types of things do you see differently done in niche marketing versus, you know, mainstream? What you see is that a lot of people confuse advertising with marketing. And advertising tends to be very big. Ad campaigns seems to be crossing various different mediums, print, digital, um, TV. When I consider a marketing, I consider it laying a groundwork of various different relationships and partnerships that you build within your community. Marketing to me is a lot more of a long run. It may include some advertising, but it is very key to where that advertising is used. But no matter the industry that you are in, it is always you know, one-to-one -one or word of mouth as the best marketing. So that is why whenever we've done marketing, it's always been making sure that we've been part of the grassroots efforts going on in the community, on the ground, making the personal relationships with job seekers, with employers, making sure that we're, they know that we're here to answer their questions and provide solutions. So to me, niche marketing is really going down deeper into what does that specific community need? And more importantly, what kind of marketing is not approved in that kind of community? 
one thing I see in the cybersecurity community is it's definitely on the community level, meaning uh, is this a community that you have on Discord? Do you have a following on Twitch? Are you attending any of the B-sides, the hacker conferences? Are you a well-known attendee to DEF CON? Really, you know, and as you may see, I am listing off the volunteer-run organizations versus the corporate commercial events because corporate commercial events, you can make a splash with a lot of money, but as far as an overall feeling of connection with the community, you would do better from a niche marketing standpoint to be involved on the ground level of many different groups and communities. Interesting. Well, let's take a break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back in a minute to talk more to Kathleen Smith. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. On today, talking to Kathleen Smith, the Chief Outreach Officer for CyberSecJobs.com. Um, and uh, we had talked before the show about, you know, your passion, your direction, and that how companies support retention and recruiting is a big thing that you help with in the market, in your niche marketing, as we were talking about before, in your outreach, is just making that support connection. So tell us about your thoughts in supporting retention. So I find this, there's a great analogy with another niche marketing effort, which is actually recruiting veterans and military spouses, is going into your own company and actually taking, you know, a poll, a survey, a, a, an inventory. I mean, who are the kinds of talent that you have already on board and what, what are their backgrounds? Are they self-taught? Which schools did they go to? How did they get their certifications? And more importantly, what groups are they involved in? Where do, where do they spend their time off, you know, offline or, you know, off work? Are they playing specific games? Do they have their own server on Discord? Are they, you know, part of D&D &D games? You know, right now there's so many that are being played, you know, virtually. Exactly what is the, the overall makeup of the key staff members that you have? And then using that as an overall strategy to say, okay, what events do we need to be part of? Everyone seems to go to besides San Antonio or besides San Francisco. We have several people who actually spoke at several of these different conferences. How can we take that knowledge and apply it to our overall marketing. Maybe we should be sponsoring. Maybe we should be providing more paid time off to volunteer in these specific communities. We did a survey and one of the surveys was based on community volunteering and many of the participants, almost 65% said that they would look to going to a new employer if that employer provided paid time off to be involved with community groups. So it's interesting knowing that this is going to be something that's going to cause someone to move to your company. You want to make sure you're providing that benefit so you don't lose the people that you already have. Ask them how many hours a month they are volunteering. It's surprising that many professionals in the cybersecurity community volunteer anyway where you're from three to four different groups a month and spend eight to 12 hours a month doing that volunteering. Well, it would be really great if you could give them some of that time during their work day to be able to do that volunteering because they become your brand ambassador. They mm -hmm. then help your overall recruiting say, you know, my company is providing this time for me to give back, but it's also giving that professional an opportunity to learn more professional skills. We actually, in the survey, asked what were some of the skills that volunteers were learning when they were volunteering. And it was planning, 
communication, leadership, all these things that employers are looking for from their candidates and their employees, but there aren't many opportunities to work on that in the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. So how is that with um, the, you know, the last four to five months we've been stuck inside? Every event I've seen has been canceled. And, you know, you hear a lot of people saying, or even just you see kind of the reluctance to re-engage re with group activity. Do you think that changes? after this kind of pandemic, even if it winds down? What's interesting is that we get this question, I get this question all the time because I'm a champion of be more involved in your community as a way to retain and recruit new talent, but also from a candidate standpoint to be able to expand their network, learn more skills and improve their job opportunities. But more than 90% of the work that is done supporting any of these groups is already done online. It is already done through Slack, through various different project management uh, programs. It's done through Discord, Twitch. So most of that is already happening online. Mm -hmm. It's the in-person that everyone looks forward to. Everyone looks forward to going to Hacker Summer Camp and seeing friends and catching up. But all of the real hard work is going on online before that and with so many of the events having to you know the new term pivot pivot from offline to online it's actually offer providing more opportunities for people to be involved participate but it's also giving more opportunities to learn new skills i've had to learn three new technologies in the last four weeks to make sure that i'm maintaining my community engagement and there are so many people who are coming online going, I never knew that you could do six or seven new activities on a platform. So the opportunities are still there. The skills development is still there. The opportunities for employers to support their employees is still there. Um, I'm part of at least six channels right now on resume reviewing and, and job search tips. And mm -hmm. it's just giving back to the community, engaging with people where they are. Yeah, and I see there's a lot of, of um, community, do, uh, how do we say that, people doing that in the cybersecurity community more so than most other vocations I've worked in. Mm -hmm. It is it is fascinating uh, when I present, you know, and the first thing that I say to people is that we don't understand what a jewel that this community has with all of the volunteer programs that are out there, how many conferences. I know people who could go to a conference put on pretty much two or three times a month and that's what they budget their money on is that they go to cincinnati they go to tampa they they are online managing this and they buy their you know ticket and they go there we don't have this in any other community i've been in healthcare i've been in nonprofits i've been in recruiting and the only conferences or organizations you have there are something you pay for and something you maybe get a CEU from versus I have, you know, a strong connection, I have a great network, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, working on not only my leadership skills, communication skills, but also my technical skills. Mm -hmm. So now I, I would ask one other thing about the, the conferences. This is something that I've been to a lot of them over, over the years, and um, they start to be the same faces. They start to be you know, like you said, you're going to meet people you talk to occasionally, but in order for growth, for augmentation, you need new, how, do, how does that new, bringing in the new blood, how do you recommend that? Expanding your network, you're, you're definitely going to find that better at any of these events that other people are coming to. And yes, no, this is one thing that you will find in any industry is that there will be that core group of people that moves from one community to the next or one conference to the next. But there are only about 10% of the overall community event. This is where we get out of our comfort zone and we talk to the person sitting next to us in, you know, at an event in a person event. If it's in a chat room, someone may, you know, put out a question and you're like, gosh, I don't know if I can answer that question. Maybe just say, hey, great question. I'm really looking forward to the answer. It's getting out of that comfort zone of, of connecting with new people. I think what's the challenge is, is you never quite know who somebody is. 
So you can get into a flame war and realize that all of a sudden the person that you were flaming with was the hiring manager over at a company that you really wanted to go to. So the golden rule, please, uh, <laughs> when you're having conversations and you're really starting to develop a relationship, you know, let's, let's start with the golden rule. I'm definitely finding that people that I've established relationships with over Twitter, and I've been on Twitter since you know, day two, um, I'm able to deepen those relationships by getting involved with Discord or with Twitch, getting involved in other ways. Just because these relationships are online doesn't mean they're going to go quickly. You definitely have to lay the groundwork and make sure that, you know, this is going to take some support and this is going to take some effort. But in the long run, we are all part of the community and we're always happier when we're part of the community. Yeah. So I know you have some surveys that we wanted to talk talk through. Uh, let's take a mm -hmm. break and hear from our our uh, sponsors. But uh, these uh, you know want to stay tuned for some interesting results that we have on some of these surveys. Be back in a minute. Security Services are your cybersecurity experts with decades of experience providing professional training services for our clients in various industries. We offer professional training and certification in areas of cybersecurity, safety, health, and environmental services at our academy. Our in-person and online training provides a collaborative environment where students can interact directly with instructors through live chats or in private classrooms. Visit murraysecurityservices.com for more information. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. On today, talking with Kathleen Smith, the Chief Outreach Officer at CybersecJobs.com. And uh, CybersecJobs, and you know, I guess Kathleen, I don't know if you put these together or who represents the surveys. You have some good survey material to go over. Um, two of them. Go ahead and I'll let you inter introduce what you found on the first one, I think, is what community volunteering, right? And we were talking a little so bit about this before. So what's interesting is when I started my overall marketing for cybersecjobs.com, I wanted to go into the community and really get on the ground intel. And it was fascinating to me that every time I was part of a B-Sides or a hacker group that I would run into people who were, you know, they would start out as folding t-shirts and then the next time I saw them, they were directing a program and then after that they were moving on up to the board. And I would find out that they also had a parallel progression in their professional life. They sort of developed the confidence, they developed a lot of leadership skills to the point that they were advancing in their career. So we did a community survey, we've done this two years in a row, where we wanted to find out if people were doing community volunteering and what were they finding as far as, you know, what are the overall skills that they were finding? What are some of the things that they found as being very important to them? Mm -hmm. So we first found that more than 50% of the people that we surveyed found that volunteering was stressful. It was stressful from a physical standpoint, anxiety, but at the same time, we found that over 98% found it them very they found their volunteering was very fulfilling. And it, what's interesting is that there's not many things that we can say in the world that are very fulfilling, maybe being a parent, something like that. But being able to say, being part of a community involvement that you're giving back and that you're very fulfilling. The other thing was, Survey respondents felt that 94% of them felt that their volunteering had a positive impact on the cybersecurity industry. And what's fascinating about this is that there is so much that we talk about in our industry that's negative. 
We talk mm-hmm. about breaches. We talk about burnout. We talk about a lot of negative topics, but people still do volunteering because they believe it has a very positive impact on the overall industry. We also wanted to dive deeper into what were some of the skills that people gained from volunteering because we all know that we're looking for talented tech talent or security talent, but we also want them to have a lot of these additional skills. So the skills that were found by volunteering, 81% felt that their teamwork skills were better, 79% felt that they were better at organization, and 75% felt that they had a better handle on their overall communication because they were challenged by conveying different ideas to different constituencies. We also found that more than 56% had support from their current volunteer, excuse me, their current employer to do their volunteering. So the most frequent benefit they got was they got paid time off to do the community volunteering. And this is something that I've seen time and time again, that companies were providing paid time to do the volunteering because they understood that this was a way for them to, the companies to build brand within the community, but also to make sure that other potential employees knew that they had this benefit. Interesting. Um, Any other findings you have from that, the survey? What's interesting is that we asked if you didn't have any of the volunteer support from your current employer, how much support would a new employer have to provide you to have you consider switching? And they said that they, over 97% said that they would switch to a new company that provided volunteering support and it would only have to be 25% of their time volunteering to that uh, organization to help them sway their ideas on moving forward to a new company. Did you have any any results that showed the productivity change at their current employment for offering this or not? We did not go that deep into asking that question, but it's something we could consider doing in the future. Yeah, I was just curious, hey, if a company gives me 20% of the time off, does the rest of my time become more productive? And how does that, that uh, benefit the company maybe even? Well, what's interesting is that we know that most of the folks that are in the community save up their vacation time to do the volunteering, to go to Hacker Summer Camp or Mm -hmm. to go to any of these events. And that's already asking a very burned out community, a very burned out tech workforce to not being able to take the time off. They're doing their second job while they're volunteering. So it's more of a management of burnout for your tech teams to say, hey, look, you don't need to take all of your vacation time to you know, support a village at, at DEF CON. Understand, interesting. Um, and uh, the yet another survey, I'm trying to remember what it was called. What job seekers was, have found a challenge? Go ahead. So we were, um, what, A second part of being part of the community, and I was always fascinated with the fact that I would be working alongside people who had 10, 15 years experience in security. They had several degrees, and their number one challenge was is they didn't know how to find a job. They couldn't find their next job. They didn't know the process. So we launched a second survey that really went into, okay, why why are we having this battle for talent or not being able to find skilled workers, but everyone I was talking to on the ground was saying they can't find a job. To me, it just sounded like there's there's a big inconsistency here. So what was interesting is one of the questions was, we asked, do you actually know how to find a job? And 45% of the respondents said that they didn't know how to find a job. I would say that that number is a little underrepresented because not many people are going to say they don't know how to do something. Then we asked, you know, what were their top strategies? Top strategies for finding a job were asking a friend, 79%. Mm -hmm. Another 80% searched for companies they already knew. So, you know, think about it right now. What are the top three companies that come to mind that you want to go work for? And this is something that I challenge job seekers with all the time. It's like, 
are you keeping up to date on the new companies that you might want to work for? Are you researching them? Are you, you know, finding those opportunities or is it just someone who is on the back of a t-shirt at, at a most recent event or a sponsorship you saw? And the third strategy that most of the job seekers were using was searching online job postings. So I look at this and I said, okay, if these are the three strategies, I, I can already see some deficiencies, which is if the number one search strategy is asking friends, but there isn't any active networking or expanding friends, it's like the definition of insanity. You keep asking the same people the same questions and they're gonna give you the same answers. You need to be expanding your friends network or just your overall network to make sure that you're expanding those opportunities of people who can refer you because referring is definitely the number one way that people find jobs the other is searching companies they know if you only know of three or four companies you're shortchanging yourself as far as the overall job search is concerned because you're only going to go look for job postings there or someone who just happened to post something in a chat that you liked working at a specific company. You really need to expand the number of companies that you're looking at. What's fascinating to me is we asked what were some of the top job search trouble areas that job seekers had. And one was they didn't know which companies were hiring for their skill set. And this is interesting because I know on the flip side, many of the recruiters are hiring managers. They're not only hiring for the security positions, but they're also hiring for so many other positions within the company. One day they may be hiring for an engineer. The next day they're hiring a marketing person. The next day they're hiring an admin. So writing a good job description is one of the biggest challenges in overall recruiting and specifically in cybersecurity because if you're looking for a pen tester but you don't know how to write a pen tester job description those people who are pen testers and don't know how to look for the skill set in your job postings we already have a big disconnect there one challenge that I always see job seekers having in this community is determining their next step in their career. A lot of people just plug and play to the exact same position at the new company, hopefully with more you know, money or more opportunity for career advancement. But a lot of people don't take the time to figure out what is the next step I want to take in my career. And not only what is the next step, but what is the long-term you know, goal that I'm looking at? What is, you know, we always ask that question, where do you want to be in five years? However, where do you really want to be? Do you want to be a manager? Do you always want to be a sole contributor? It really, you have to drive that discussion, not just leave it to whichever recruiter reaches out to you. And another top job search trouble area was finding recruiters to work with. There's a big misconception and confusion in the industry as far as what is the difference between a staffing firm, a headhunter, or a direct recruiter. We did do a survey question on the community survey and 79% of the job seekers said that they wanted to work with a direct recruiter, not with a staffing firm or a headhunter. Mm -hmm. And the challenge that it, with that is, is that not many job seekers are taking the time to network with recruiters. My recommendation is always to have seven to 10 recruiters in your community and keep up to date with them because you don't want to try to find a recruiter when you just found out that you're being laid off and then you don't know if you can trust them or not. Mm -hmm. A recruiter takes a recruiting position because they want to make a difference in somebody's life. But that person needs to know your skill sets, needs to know what you're good at. And that isn't just done in one phone call or one LinkedIn chat. So if you have a phone interview with somebody and you feel like you really made a connection and maybe you didn't get that job, still keep up to date and keep networking with that recruiter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have heard that that I want to work with a direct recruiter at a company many times. Do you, it almost sounds like you're saying, you know, that's maybe not the best approach. No, I, I think it is the best approach to definitely work with a recruiter that works at the company, not gotcha. with a staffing firm or a headhunter. I mean, staffing firms and headhunters have specific uses within the community, and I have several friends who work at both. But if you really want to 
have someone who is your advocate inside mm -hmm. the company, you want to work with that direct recruiter because that's their job. Gotcha. Their job is to make sure that you are well primed for the interview, that you understand what the interview process is, that you understand the expectations of the job, mm -hmm. and then they are your advocate inside the company. Okay. So we're getting kind of close to the end of our time and this has been great information, but I want to give you a chance to do any shout outs for, to our listener base for what you offer, how people get in touch with you and what kind of services and whatnot. Sounds great. So you're always welcome to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Kathleen E. Smith. I'm very big on uh, Twitter, big meaning that's where I spend a lot of my time. So my Twitter handle is yes, it's Kathleen. As you said, Christopher, I am the Chief Outreach Officer for CybersecJobs.com. We are a job board where you can search for job listings or you can also create a profile and allow recruiters to search for you and contact you about finding a job. We also do several online virtual job fairs. We have one coming up uh, for San Antonio cybersecurity jobs, August 11th. We also have a few more happening in the fall. And I also do a little work over at a company called clearjobs.net, also a job board and job fair company. All right, so there you have it. Reach out to her on LinkedIn or any of her sites and uh, or on Twitter. But thanks a lot for joining today, Kathleen. You have a great day. Thank you, this has been wonderful. Okay. Thank you for listening to New Cyber Frontier. Remember to follow or like our post and circulate each new show to your networks. We keep you informed, bring you the latest news, explore new trends, and find the hottest topics. With New Cyber Frontier, you don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert. Just get plugged in. We encourage you to get involved. Tell us what topics interest you and join our mailing lists. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. That's newcyberfrontier.com. Check out our previous interviews and please let us know if there are any topics that you would like to hear discussed. See you next time on New Cyber Frontier.